Today we're looking at section 3-4, velocity and other rates of change, also known as probably the most important section we're going to do all year. We're going to look at particle motion. Suppose we are given the following function for the position of a particle on a coordinate axis. S of t in this book represents position. I know it should probably say P of t, but it doesn't. S of t represents position. So the position of the particle is represented by this function. We're only going to look at this function from 0 to 9 seconds. And it says where t is in seconds and s of t is in meters. So for the velocity, we're going to talk about velocity today. We're looking at meters per second. And we also will talk about acceleration. And that will be meters per second squared. We are asked to graph and find the average velocity on the interval 0 to 9. So we're going to graph s of t on our calculator. We'll make a little sketch of it and uh, then we'll find the average velocity. Here it is entered into the calculator, the s of t, and when we graph it we see that uh, it goes up, back down, crosses the x-axis, and then loops around again, crosses again, and it crosses uh, at, let's see, one, two, three, four, a little bit after five and between eight and nine. Now the window I've used is from zero to nine and on the y negative ten to twenty. So we're going to sketch this, make a rough sketch a little bit after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and between 8 and 9. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a little bit after 5, in between 8 and 9, and we'll just make a rough estimate of the graph. And there it is. Now we're asked to find the average velocity on the interval, and average velocity is the slope of the secant line from the beginning to the end. So we're going to find the slope of this line. We find that using the old slope formula, the two-point slope formula. So we have s of 9 minus s of 0 all over 9 minus 0. Since we have the equation already in our calculator, we can find s of 9 pretty easily by going second, calculate, and the very first thing is value. If we press enter on value, we can enter 9, and that will tell me what the y value is, and it's 6.5. So we're looking at 6.5 minus, if I plug 0 into this function, all it's going to be left is 2, and then over 9. So we have uh, 4.5 over 9, and 4.5 and happens to be half of 9, so the slope ends up being 1 half. And you can see even with my little drawing here, it kind of looks like a half. Let's talk more about velocity. What is the velocity of the particle at t equals 3? This is asking about instantaneous velocity. Velocity, v of t, is equal to the derivative of the position. Velocity is how position changes, and change in a function is derivative. If you want to find the change, you're going to be taking the derivative. So let's take the derivative of the original function up here. Uh, if we take 3 times a third, that's 1, and then reduce the power by 1, so we have t squared. And then 2 times 9 halves is 9, reduce the power by 1, and then finally we just have plus 14. Now the question is, what is the velocity of the particle at t equals 3 seconds? Well, this is the equation for velocity now. It's the derivative of the position. So we're going to evaluate, there's an evaluation bar, evaluate at t equals 3 seconds. So if we plug 3 into the function, we get 9 minus 27 plus 14, which is negative 4, and it is meters per second. Now when we get a negative value for velocity, that just means that the particle is moving backwards. Or in this case, it could be moving to the left, and a negative direction is also down. So it all depends on uh, what the problem wants. What is the speed of the particle at 3 seconds? Well, we don't report speed as a negative value. So speed is reported as the absolute value of velocity. So in this case, the speed of the particle is 4 meters per second. Velocity can have direction. Speed does not. Speed is always positive. Let's graph the velocity on the axis above. Make the velocity bold when you graph. Or I'll just make it a different color. Uh, how about, uh, I think, is this going to be red? There's red. Now, this is the velocity function right here, and it has zeros of 2, and it factors into t minus 7, so 2 and 7. 
So it's going to have zeros of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and it's a parabola. And the parabola looks a little bit like this, and you can do it on your calculator if you want to see exactly what it looks like. So the black is the position function, and the red is the velocity. Now we need to discuss the relationship between velocity of a particle and direction it is traveling. Veloc if the velocity is positive, then we say that the particle is moving to the right or the particle is moving up. It all depends on what the situation is. If the velocity is negative, that means that the particle is moving to the left or down. And if the particle's velocity is zero, that means the particle is stopped. If you have a velocity of zero, you're not moving at all. Let's describe the motion of the particle. When is the particle moving right, left, or stopped? Now, in the book, when you're asked to describe the motion of the particle, the answer in the back of the book, or even the answer in the examples, are going to be a lot different than what I want. What I want is just when is the particle moving left, when is it moving right, and when is it stopped? So if we go back to, actually, why don't we just kind of sketch it here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, the velocity function had zeros at two and seven, and it looked, I missed a little bit, should go through that point, and it comes back up. So, th and this uh, zero was two, this zero was seven. So the particle is moving left from two to seven because the values of the velocity function, remember this is V of T, are negative between two and seven. The particle is moving to the right where the velocity is positive. Velocity is positive here and it's positive here. Now we're going to include zero uh, in our moving to the right because it has a positive value at zero. So zero to two, that's where the velocity is positive. And also from seven to nine, remember uh, this problem only once from zero to nine. So we're not going to go to infinity on this one. We're just going from seven to nine. Nine also has a positive value up here, so we will include it on moving to the right. This particle is stopped where the velocity is zero, which is t equals two and t equals seven. And that's seconds. Let's talk about the acceleration. What is acceleration? It's uh, a rate of change of the velocity. You step on your accelerator in your car, your velocity is what changes. That's why it's called an accelerator. Find the acceleration of the particle at t equals three seconds. Well, acceleration is the change in the velocity. Velocity is the change of position. So we need to take the derivative. Derivative represents change. So the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. So the velocity function is t squared minus 9t plus 14. So the acceleration is the derivative. We'll use the power rule, of course, 2t minus 9. It says find the acceleration of the particle t equals 3 seconds. Now we'll find a of 3 which is 2 times 3 minus 9, 6 minus 9. That means we have negative 3 meters per second squared. Find the velocity of the particle when the acceleration is 0. So this is kind of, this is a two-part question. The first part is, when is the acceleration equal to 0? Well, here's your acceleration formula right here. So we have a of t equals 2t minus 9. Now we want to know when the acceleration is 0. So we said acceleration equal to zero. We have two t minus nine. Add nine and divide by two. So t equals nine halves. That's when the acceleration is zero, but it says find the velocity when the acceleration is zero. So v of nine halves equals nine halves squared minus nine times nine halves and then plus 14. If you enter this into your calculator, you'll get negative 6.25 meters per second squared. We're asked to graph the acceleration and the velocity together on the axis below. Now, the velocity function is a parabola, and it has zeros at 2 and at 7. And let's make that one in red. Here's the velocity, very roughly. And if you graph 
this should actually if you look on your calculator and graph it it looks more like that and then uh, the acceleration because we're graphing acceleration and velocity the acceleration is 2t minus 9 and it has a y-intercept, or excuse me, an x-intercept, uh, a zero of nine halves, which is four and a half. One, two, three, four and a half. And if you look on your calculator and graph it, it looks kind of like that. Let's discuss the relationship between velocity and acceleration. Imagine you're standing here, and you throw something up in the air. As it goes up, the velocity, we'll say, is positive going up, and there's some acceleration acting on, not acceleration, let's, uh, gravity, which is acceleration, is acting on the object. And it is pulling the pin down. So we'll say that the acceleration or gravity has a negative force on this pin that's being thrown up. So as you throw it up, the velocity is positive and the acceleration is negative. And as you throw this up, the pin or whatever you're throwing up slows down until it reaches its maximum height. So if they're opposite, if velocity and acceleration have the same sign, well, we want this. Velocity and acceleration have different signs. The object will slow down. Then as the pin reaches its maximum height, it's going to start falling back down. Velocity is now negative, and acceleration is also negative. They have the same sign. And as the pin comes down, it's going to speed up, of course. So if velocity and acceleration have the same sign, the object will speed up. Velocity and acceleration have different signs. The object is going to slow down. So we are asked, I'm sure on the next one, uh, no, this is not it. Uh, let's talk about when this object is speeding up and slowing down. So there are really four places we want to look on this one. We want to look at all of the zeros of either the acceleration or the velocity, because if either one changes signs, that could change your answer as to whether this object is speeding up or slowing down. So let's look at speed up. And we'll also look at slow down. So we have four regions here. Here's one zero for velocity. Here's one zero for the acceleration. And here's a zero again for the velocity. So each time one of these changes signs, that's potential for our answer to be different. So we want to keep track of velocity and acceleration in each of these four regions. Velocity and acceleration. So velocity here is positive, and acceleration is negative. Here both of them are negative. Here velocity is negative, and acceleration is positive up here. And here they are both positive. So remember, this 0 was 2, this was 9 halves, and this was 7. So this thing is speeding up when they're both negative, or from 2 to 9 halves. 2 to 9 halves. And this thing is also speeding up. Oh, this, this should be a plus here. In the fourth little region, from 7 to 9. 7, and we're going to include 9. This thing slows down from 2, no, no, from 0 to 2. 0 to 2, I want to include 0. And it also slows down from 9 halves to 7. We will do example 4 and example 5 in class. If you would like to look at those in the book, that it has it all written out for you. By all means, go ahead and look at that. And then I will uh, go over it in class, like I said.